What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode. This is episode number 26 and we start today's episode off with a brand new season after a 6th place finish with Everton last season. So let's qualify for European football for season 3. Uh, and heading into the new season just before we get there I want to show you a couple of things. First Ryan Astley we've agreed to loan out our young centre back to Bournemouth for a one year loan. You see the players coming back from their loan spells here. And also Josh Warrington a uh, young central midfielder got a new contract as well uh, so as season two would end i got to say fantastic season yes humiliation in the fa cup getting knocked out in the third round by the championship side blackburn rovers that was my worst loss as ever to manager so far but a Carabao cup final where we were seconds away from a penalty shootout and a sixth place finish yup to me last season was a big success so heading to the new season our budget for season three is 67 million pounds and I've got to say I'm really happy with that and you might be sitting there thinking really why <laughs> you know in modern day football that's not a lot but here's the reason why and firstly I want to show you we are in the Europa League this year as well uh, for those curious uh, the objectives though crazy by the way finish in the top four and win the FA Cup really bored really okay I mean I'll do my best but <laughs> No promises, mate. But um, yeah, I'm really happy with that budget being £67 million. And the reason being is very, very simple. What is the title of this C uh, series, this save? Realistic career mode. That's a realistic budget for an Everton team that have struggled with FFP over the years. And yes, of course, it is not a lot of money. But I don't want a lot of money. I don't want £150 million pounds of Everton. I want to keep it realistic. And to me, £67 million pounds is what I would call a fair, realistic budget for Season 3. I'm happy with that. I'm really happy with that. So yeah, very happy indeed. Um, so as I run you through the squad here, uh, I just realised I uh, I just said we have a boxer in our team. So we used to have an NBA player and now we've got a boxer. <laughs> Sorry, Lewis Warrington, not Josh Warrington. Lewis Warrington is uh, is in our team. Um, dear, oh dear. So Anthony Gordon is... <laughs> Anthony Gordon, I used to call Aaron Gordon. So Lewis Warrington is now Josh Warrington. But uh, yeah, Lewis Warrington, you would have seen there, he's he's still on the transfer list, despite uh, agreeing a new contract. I can't remove him, that's so annoying. But also you would have seen Matt Doherty is retiring come the end of the season as well. And as I run you through the squad here, and I show you the players who I'm giving new contracts to, uh, Branthwaite is definitely staying, no doubt about that, really good young centre-half. Uh, Tom Davis, of course, staying as well. Academy graduate, and now we're in Europe. I've said it before, as we're doing this save realistically, we want to make sure we've got enough players to meet the squad registration rules. Mason Holgate is one of those players as well. Now, Mason Holgate actually came through the Barnsley Academy, but he signed for Everton when he was I believe 17 years old and because he stayed at Everton for three plus consecutive years before having a brief loan spell I believe at West Brom that was over the age of 21 that means to Mason Holgate despite the fact he was signed and wasn't out of the Everton Academy is still technically a homegrown player as is Tom Davis of course Ben Godfrey got a new deal one of the higher potential players in the team and a regular staple in my back line and also last year's top scorer Dominic Calvert-Lewin also getting a new deal as well on £65,000 a week. As for the other players here, I'm not sure I'll keep any of these guys. Now, Matt Doherty is going to retire come the end of the season. Totally fine with me. Obviously, now as we head into the new season and Nathan Patterson's come back from loan, looks really good. I think that one year at Aston Villa was a great decision to loan him out to Villa Park there. He got very, very consistent game time under Unai Emery. He's up to 79 rated. And don't forget, we've got Milan Van Uyck now as well. Docky is third choice right back. So for him to retire this season, I'm fine with that. I've got him in so I wouldn't be against selling him this year anyway. Connor Cody, I'm unsure about. I guess I'll have to think about it. But um, yeah, for now, I, uh, I I don't really have any plans to keep any of those four dab day deals that come the end of the year. I just want to say very briefly, guys, um, I'm very ill at the moment. Um, it's not COVID. I did a test yesterday. Thank God it's not COVID. But I'm very, very ill. So if I don't sound very good, uh, yeah, I do apologize for that. The last two nights, I have sweated through my sheets so badly. I've had to change the bedding twice in two days. It's the way my body deals with fever. You know, everybody deals with fever. A different. That's the way my body deals with it. My body, if I'm ill, I just sweat everything out. <laughs> it's been embarrassing. But um, anyway, um, as we uh, we see here, the transfer window begins. You would have seen there was a bid for Eric Dyer from Chelsea. And now I wasn't against selling him here as Villarreal put in a bid for Ruben Vinagre. After the signing of Anthony Robinson last season, I'm fine letting Vinagre go. 
I've got to be honest, I didn't get that right. You know, Vinagre was here on loan in season one. I thought, you know, we can get him for a cheap deal for Sporting for season two. Good little backup for Michael Enko. Dude never grew. I mean, he got some game time, but he just never really developed. I got that one wrong. I should have just decided to have him for one year and then leave him as he is. But uh, yeah, I, I bought him back permanently. Bad decision. I'm going to sell him to Villarreal for £8 million pounds there and call cool time on his short tenure here at Goodison Park. But for Eric Dyer, I decided to turn the deal down. Um, the main reason is very simple. Is he had another bid here, this time from Juventus as well, uh, for the former Spurs and Sporting Lisbon man. Um, you know, to me, you know, we saw James Tarkowski to Spurs last year, and I said before, that to me was, I, I would say, a reasonably realistic transfer for several reasons. Well, you know, he's towards the back end of his career. Spurs are a bigger club than Everton. They are currently in Europe. We weren't in Europe last year when the big came in, in the January transfer window. Um, you know, that, that to me made sense. Tarkowski towards the back end of his career wanted to try European football other than the very brief Euro Europa League qualifier he had uh, with Burnley. Uh, I think they were knocked out by Olympiacos back then. But, um, you know, he'd want to try his hand at European football, score player at a big club, and he's been linked to Spurs before when he was at Burnley. Chelsea and Spurs famously don't really do business, and admittedly Dyer is now an Everton player, but after just one year, I can't see him saying to all the Spurs fans for all the years he was there in North London, well, I've gone now, so sod you guys, I'm off to Chelsea. I couldn't really see it. He's never been linked to Chelsea before either, so I, I didn't think that was realistic, hence why I turned it down. To be honest here, out of all the clubs in the top six, I think Manchester United, or perhaps Man City, is the only club... Bzz, uh, I would consider selling Eric Dyer to for the realism. Chelsea, to me, never been in there before. And after all his years at Spurs, famously Spurs and Chelsea don't really do business. So, yeah, couldn't really see that happening in real life. But for new signings with Everton as Vinagre goes to Villarreal. Well, if you read the title, you're wondering who it was going to be. And if you've been keeping up to date with his save, you'd have heard me say it before. Last season, and I think even back in season one, I mentioned it as well. He's never really had a home, this guy. Ever since he left Anderlet and went to Chelsea as a teenager, he's never really had a home. But I've said before, and I'll say it again, I think there is only one club where he's been truly loved for the long term. Yes, he had a loan spell at West Brom, at the Hawthorns, but that was only for one year. But I would say, really, the place he's been loved the most is at Goodison Park. And on the fringes of Chelsea right now, with a year left in his contract, coming back through Inter Milan, frozen out by Graham Potter last season, didn't play for Chelsea last year. In his final year of his contract, Chelsea are going to cash in and balance the books. I said, listen, I know this guy's still got the ability. And whilst he might not be as young and as spring as he was back in his first stint at Goodison Park, I believe he'll be just as important. My first signing of the window as we're back in Europe looking for star quality as we aim to improve our luck in front of goal after being the lowest scorers in the top 10 last year. Welcome back to Goodison Park, Romelu Lukaku. And I am buzzing with this sign as well because I could definitely see it as well. Like I said, Lukaku's never really had a home in his entire career. You know, when he left Anderlecht to join Chelsea... He just never really got going in his first stint there. He had the loan spell at West Brom and then at Everton. And then the deal became permanent. He went to Goodison Park. He spent, I think, three or four years there at Everton. And he, he was loved by the Everton fans. He scored some big goals in big games. He showed he's got some tremendous talent. And after leaving to Manchester United, you know, I, I really felt as though this could be it. This could be his home at a big club. But it... You know, it didn't really happen for it. I mean, don't get me wrong. He wasn't that bad at Manchester United. Everyone would make fun of his first touch or whatever. He wasn't that bad. I mean, I saw him play live a couple times. He wasn't that bad. But I think Manchester United fans were going for a little bit better, if you will. In the end, he moved on. He had a great year at Inter Milan, you know, winning them the Scudetto. Then coming back to Chelsea and then the drama there. And then leaving on loan, back to Inter Milan. And then, you know, this season in real life, he's back in Inter Milan. He's not done very well. He's just never really, ever since leaving Everton, had a proper home where he feels loved. I said, Romelu, come back to Goodison, mate. You're 31, soon to turn 32. Come back to Everton. We're a team on the rise. We're a club on the rise. Right now, European football's back at Goodison. And you're not playing at Chelsea. You're going to be sitting there on the bench for another year. Come back to Everton. I'll give you a three-year contract. And I'll tell you this right now, mate. You'll be loved. 
You know, you haven't had that love since you were here. You'll be loved here. I promise you that, mate. Romelu Lukaku is back over for £38 million. Pounds. I'm buzzing with that. Yes, he's 31 years old, but players don't decline like they used to. And at 31, he's still got the fitness. He's still got the physicality. Very strong, as we know, and very tall as well as Thomas uh, Cannon here. One of our youngsters goes to FC Dallas. But yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with that. Lukaku is back, and I think to me... You know, being in Europe now, that made absolutely perfect sense. If we were ever going to get back into Europe, and if Lukaku was still at Chelsea, which he is, he's been frozen out there by Graham Potter. He didn't play last year. Then I know this is the right time, and I'm really happy with that as well. So you would have seen as well uh, during the course of this episode, tons of bids for Damari Gray, uh, the winger who in season one, I think he actually won the assist title. It was really good last year. Not as much game time, more of a squad player for me. Looking to move on, get some more first-team football. I wasn't against selling him to Fiorentina. I wanted Stanek, their goalkeeper, who played several years at Everton uh, as a youngster. I say played, sat on the bench. You know, was in the reserves for us in a few years as a youngster. I wouldn't have minded getting him back, you know, but... In the end, Fiorentina said no. But I'm glad in the end, the place that did sell Damari Gray was a lot more realistic. He's going to link up with David Moyes and play for West Ham for 17.5 mil. And I'm happy with that as well because a lot more realistic than him going to FC Nantes, for example. So Damari Gray stays in England, goes to West Ham, a much more realistic destination. And again, that was the key for me. So I'm happy we got him to a realistic destination. So as you'll see, the end of today's episode, that fee for Damari Gray, 17.5 mil, raises our budget up a little little bit we're just over 39 million pounds in our transfer budget now so whilst we still did make the big signing Romelu Lukaku there is still a decent chunk of money still remaining the question is after spending big on a new striker to improve or hopefully improve our luck in front of goal as that's been our weakest area of play in our first two years at Goodison where do we spend the rest of the money let me know in the comment section down below Scott be honest here I'm not really sure <laughs> I'm definitely thinking maybe a new fullback maybe a new centre half but for the most part let me know in the comments where we should improve this Everton team next because we've got 39 million but I don't really know where to look but thanks for watching guys I uh, really appreciate it once again sorry I don't sound very well at the moment hopefully I'll be better in the next few days but thanks for watching much love to you and I'll see you for the next episode of the realistic career mode very soon